this is what I like about the different platforms because it allows you to reach people in different mindsets. Episode 119. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and this week I'm talking with another social media master, Nigel Rimmer, who is the founder of Property Tents. You can go and see them, his Instagram account, uh, which he has grown very successfully to quite a large audience, I think probably around 30, 30 odd thousand followers. Um, the, the handle is IG, uh, is at Property Tent. And Nigel is an experienced consultant, both in real estate and the social housing sectors, Um, has got a deep understanding of brand marketing, lead generation, customer acquisitions, sales and strategic planning, Um, has got an in-depth knowledge on legislation and the processes surrounding leasehold consultation. So in this interview, Nigel and I discuss all of those and of course we discuss our love of social media, of Instagram, we talk a little bit about TikTok and how architects and property professionals can be utilizing these platforms to grow an audience and connect with new audiences. So sit back and relax and enjoy Nigel Rimmer. So massive thank you to all of you for listening and supporting the Business of Architecture UK for the last couple of years. Big shout out to those of you who have come to our live events, attended the webinars, and of course to those of you who have downloaded the weekly podcast and have been listening to them on your bicycles. And as you know, we love helping architects win meaningful and profitable work, but it's not always that simple to implement these ideas or translate them into something that will work for you. So what I wanted to do was to to invite you onto a quick 15 minute chat with myself. We can both grab a cup of tea and I'd like to ask you about what content you found most valuable and why and what you'd like to hear more of. And I'd also love to hear more about your business, and what you're building at the moment and where you are headed to business wise in 2020. So there's no charge or any obligation with this call, just simply to find out how our content has been of value. And if we get that far and with your permission, of course, what might be next? What might be possible and how Business of Architecture UK could be supportive of that. Does that sound fair? Brilliant. So if you want to book a 15-minute chat with me, I'm calling these calls the BOA UK Discovery Call or just simply a chat with Ryan. Use the link in the information and I look forward to speaking to you. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host Ryan Willard and I'm sitting by the Thames with Nigel Rima. Nigel, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Rion. Absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. And you are a social media practitioner. That's uh, correct. You also work at, at Wandsford um, with uh, leasehold regulations, leasehold... Leasehold consultation officer, yeah, leasehold. for Wandsworth Council. That's Fantastic. correct. Fantastic. And you are the um, owner of the Instagram site Property Tent. That's correct, yeah. Which has got a huge following. How many people do you have? I believe today we have about 32,000. 32,000 yeah. followers. And it is a kind of property inspired, architectural inspired um, Instagram account. Explain to me, what is it? What is yeah, it? So, so, Property 10 essentially is a platform whereby we repost um, properties um, looking at architecture, interior design, and also um, stuff relating to estate agents. So essentially what we do is we work a lot with estate agents in the industry mm-hmm. um, and help them with their marketing. So, so a lot of the properties that you would see on Property Tent are essentially properties that are on the market for either rental or for sale. And how did you begin this account? What was the, what was the intention behind it? Okay, so the initial intention behind creating Property Tent um, was my my need to actually uh, become an estate agent, I think. Right. Um, So at the time when I started it, I was looking at a lot of online agencies that were popping up. And I I thought that was something that I could get into. Hmm. Um, Rolling back maybe, I don't know, 10 years prior to that, working for Lambeth Council, I did have the vision of starting my own estate agency at some point. And with the invention of social media and the different platforms, I thought, oh, wow, this, this is my opportunity to, to do something like that. Now, when I was looking at starting an estate agency, I thought to myself, 
what are the things that I need to um, essentially bring attention to that? Mm. And, you know, Instagram, social media was one of the main things. And because I wasn't too clued up in that industry, I thought to myself, rather than start off by just starting an agency, why don't I do it the other way around? Normally, people who start businesses will start the business first and then think about marketing and sales later. I thought, do it the other way around. Let's start with the marketing first. So that's when I, I started posting pictures on Instagram to potentially build attention to Property 10. And then once I had built enough following, any other thing that I was doing with the business, I could filter through that. So I'd already have people that were aware of what I was doing. Ah, so this is interesting. Yeah. So so it, you didn't necessarily have a kind of clear business. There was no clear business plan. At, at, at the outset. No. But, but you, what was clear was that I, I want to use this platform to build attention. Yes. And to build eyes. Yeah. And then I can, once there's a, a kind of audience there, then... Yep then we can figure out a business exactly. that emerges from it. And the thing about that as well is I knew I wanted to do something around property, mm. whether that's an estate agency or helping people market their property. I, I, didn't, I didn't really know at that time, but I knew it was going to be around property. So my vision was if I create a platform that can bring attention to whatever I, I think about doing in the future, that would be beneficial to me. So that was essentially what, what Property 10 was. And... The journey of actually curating the content and um, meeting other people in the industry will essentially educate me mm. in that industry and and potentially point me into another direction which I don't I don't necessarily know. Yeah, I love this. This is this is very much kind of you know similar sort of strategy to how business of architecture has has grown in a way, um, and I often call it the emergent strategy, which is. You, I didn't realize there was a word for it. Yeah, well, well, that's it, interesting it, it, as well. It, it's kind of like you you understand as part of your business plan or your business model that you don't know what the niche is necessarily. You don't know what the business operations are going to be. Um, so, you, but but you do know that by building attention and by building market awareness of something that and building a community that there will be at some point a service or a product that you that's can, right that you can deliver to yeah. them i mean you look at you look at um uh, things like facebook for example yeah. that was unmonetized for a long period of time it was just focusing on building a huge audience of yeah. users and then it became what it was so yeah yeah so uh, it, it's 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 brilliant. How did you start? What were the first things that you were posting? So um the first things I were posting were sort of general properties. I wasn't looking at any um you know architecturally pleasing properties as such. Just your box standard two up two down uh, you know uh, row of terrace houses or something like that. Um but then as time went on I I started to understand how Instagram works and you know started to understand that it's a visually it's a it's a platform for you know visually pleasing aesthetically pleasing photos um you know people necessarily would not post stuff that you'd put on maybe facebook onto instagram instagram right. essentially was a platform that was built for people who were photographers um you know that were you know capturing um you know scenery and um you know just different landscapes and you know that that sort of thing in in a in a in a different way um that would be more aesthetically pleasing to the end user um so yeah my terrace houses you know were not something that were going to exactly you know bring a lot of attention to the platform at that stage but i slowly began to understand how instagram works again that was due to me also looking at other accounts as well mm. uh, like i said i i got a lot of inspiration from um, looking at accounts in America, especially real estate agents who were doing using Instagram to its full potential. I mean, they were doing like video walkthroughs, um, showing, you know, interior design at a, a next level that, you know, I had never been privy to before. Um, so, yeah, so that was a, a great eye opener for me. So I, I started sort of gravitating towards that. And then I realized that this is exactly what people want to see. So, you know, turn it up, turn it up a notch, and it, and again, I didn't want it to be too static, and post the same type of pictures. For for me, it w it was quite boring. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
obviously I want to please the audience at large. Um, but again, I can't just put stuff up there that I don't believe in or I don't find um, interesting as such. So a lot of the stuff is basically the stuff that I find inter- interesting. Yeah. So, you know, you may see a mixture of um, high end real estate, um, you know, prime property, which is over 10 million going. And then you might see me post a picture of, um, you know, a container, um, you know, which in 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 its in its own right looks looks beautiful, but is a fraction of the cost. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, they both they both serve a purpose, um, which essentially is you know to provide a home for somebody or you know a place to live or um, a space to be used. You know, for whatever means. So it's yeah. it's, it's interesting. I mean, I really enjoy looking at property property tent and kind of always thinking, ah, oh, like. Why has he posted that? Not why has he posted that, but I like the fact that you've chosen that or that's quite interesting or there's, there's something quite personal to you mm. about the way that you, that you curate it. Yeah. How do you go about finding stuff for it? And, and can you explain a little bit about what the content is that you, that you post? Because you, you were saying that you repost a lot of stuff, yeah. but you also make original yes. content as well. Yeah. So... Essentially, I'd say at this present time, um, the sort of makeup of our content is, I'd say 90% of it is reposted. The other 10% is stuff that I create myself. Now, Instagram has allowed me to um, find new skills as well, because if you have an Instagram account, essentially a a lot of that has to do with you being being able to create your own content. Mm. Instagram being a visual platform, again, it means I have to be... um, you know, quite focused on creating my own pictures, creating video. Um, so I was able to build up um, a, a relationship with estate agents that were trying to market their own properties as well. So that put me in a good position because as well as me building a following, I could br- then bring them value as well by bringing them exposure to their listings. Mm-hmm. So it was a sort of a two-way thing. I was being able to create content for Insta- for uh, Property 10 and being able to market their properties at, at, at the same time. Ah, so you're actually using it as well to make real life connections. Of with course, people. that is, and that was something maybe I didn't realize in the beginning. Yeah. But then as time went on, I was like, wow, this is, I mean, it's, it's a way of meeting people. I mean, it's how we met, you know, through Instagram and it's, a way of learning about other disciplines within the properties um, sector, mm. you know, architects, interior design. I mean, I, I'm not an architect. I'm not an interior designer. I'm not. I'm not an estate agent. I have interest in property. Um, you know, my um, I work for the council, so you know, I'm I'm looking at social housing. I'm coming from a social housing background, which is completely completely different. But what I what I love about it is that I get to see things from a different perspective mm. that the people in the actual industry themselves may not see. I can put another spin on it and say, look, why don't you try it this way? Oh, I didn't think about it like that. Well, of course you didn't because you're in your own zone. This yeah. is how you've done it. And and I'm guilty of that as well, working for the council. You know, I think, why am I, why am I talking like that? It's, I've, you know, it's something that I've been brought up with and, you know, this is how I've been molded. You know? d- d- does does the the work you do at Property Tent inform the work that you're doing at the council in any kind of way? Do the two ever meet? They do, <laughs> in fact. They 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 do. Um, okay, so um, again, this is this will be more for my um, my personal brand, which is something right. that I'm going to be really focusing on um, in the next coming months going forward. So, so what's the difference between personal brand and? Property tent. Okay, just so, so just for the audience, if they don't know. Okay, this. so property tent essentially is other people's um, content. Essentially, it's it's a marketing platform for real estate agents, for interior designers, for architects. Now, with my own personal brand, what I, what I the way I look at, I'm looking at that is showing you behind the scenes. Yeah. Like, how am I how am I going about? Um, you know, sourcing sourcing these um, experiences with other people in, in, in the industry. Like, for instance, uh, me meeting up with you today. I mean, really, what I should have been doing is, like, doing some sort of post or, you know, oh, I've come to meet Rion Willard for a podcast today, you know, but I haven't done that. But that's something that I need to be doing going forward to show people the behind the scenes, the process, what is happening. Um, 
And, you know, if I'm going to a listing with an agent, um, showing the area, showing how we set up, um, you know, to film the actual um, video walkthrough, um, what is the process behind that? You know, so that's a lot, so that's some of the stuff that I need to be I need to be showing, and going forward, that is something that I will be doing. Right. Okay. So that's it. so it's the kind of your personal journey, and then sometimes yes. you know your your work at the at the at, at one sort of council as well, kind of can be documented. Can be documented as well, and I have done a, I have done a bit of that. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, so as you know, I do leasehold consultation. Um, we had a we have a major work section that deal with. Um, obviously major works, that's large scale um, refurbishments or um, repairs to um, council estates and blocks. And that could range from anything from maybe, I don't know, 500,000 to a million plus going. And then we have minor works, which are normally undertaken to like maybe street properties, mm. stuff like that. So we recently had a street property um, that was undergoing external decorations and repairs. And funnily enough, um, this particular property English Heritage, I believe it was. Right. Um, I think the founder of the English Heritage right. lived in that property. And as part of the works, um, we were going to you know, decorate the um, external facade of the, the building, carry out concrete repairs, um, some rendering. Um, and in that whole discussion with um, English Heritage as well, um, they, sorry, the founder of the National Trust right. lived in that property. Right, okay. So obviously it was... They wanted to put a blue plaque on on that building. Ah, oh, I see. So after we'd undertaken the external decorations and repaired the building and done all the bits and bobs that we needed to do, um, they were going to do a presentation. And I think they wanted to coincide that with, um, I think it was, I can't remember how many years, but an anniversary anyway. And I believe that's going to be this summer. So they're going to do a presentation. I believe probably local councils will attend or something like that. So, I mean, I, I did document the the beginning of that process mm. I, you know I showed the building in its distressed state and sort of you know outlined what work we were going to carry out because I obviously know what the specification is and um, yeah so that's the kind of stuff that I would, I would like to be doing um, yeah so so going back to property tent itself it's a lot of repurposed content yes content that you're finding from other architects, yep. estate agents, yep. you repost these. These can lead the reposting actually leads to real life connections, yep. real life conversations. Yep. Um, can you tell us a little bit about? We were talking about this earlier, actually. The, the kind of courtesy that goes and the and the licensing rights that yep. happens with reposting other people's content yep. and material. And like, are you allowed to do it? Because yep. Instagram doesn't have. Uh, a share function itself. How do you how do you do that, and yeah. what's the courtesy behind? Okay, it? so with Instagram, um, obviously there are um, party apps that you can use um, to actually reshare posts. Um, you don't necessarily have to use them. It makes it it makes it easier um, because you can actually you know scroll scroll through a feed, and then if you see something that you like or that resonates with you, you can then mm. um, literally you know. Um, extrapolate that from from the account and then put that into another folder and then at a later stage um, when you're curating your your content or um, you're organizing your feed and you think okay I, I want to um, put something that relates to this and this picture fits the bill then you can you know sort of s slot that one in um, but one thing to sort of um, be mindful of and it's something that I'm quite passionate about and um, very strict on is ensuring that where you uh, where you are using someone else's um, post, that you ensure that you you credit them accordingly, mm. um, so that you you know they know the person who's viewing the post knows where that particular post originated from, and it's you know it's common courtesy to do that. I mean, if if I'm creating original content and I'm posting that, out, I would expect the same thing as well. Um, essentially, it you know it it brings. It, it brings that value back to the person who created the content as well. Mm. And again, it also builds a relationship with that person because in this new age of social media, a lot of people who are on social media understand that that is the whole purpose of it, is to share, to share your content and bring exposure back to your, your account and potentially get a follower. Mm. Um, because if, if, you're post, if you're posting something and it resonates with somebody, they will look at it. They will see where did, you know who posted that. Where I want to see more of that, you know. So they will go into that account, 
if you have credited them properly, the person will be able to backtrack and find that person. And then potentially if they look at their feed and like what they see, they will potentially follow that person as well. That's how it works. Do, do, do you ever get slapped wrists or anyone saying, please don't do this or don't share this? Yeah, or we, yeah we how, have, how do you deal we with have that? that? I mean, it's, it's a simple conversation. I mean, if somebody you know, contacts you and says that they don't want their, their post their post shared. You know, I always point out, um, you know, we've we've put in a credit we've credited you on that post. Do you still want us to take it down? Yes please. Okay, fair enough. We'll take it down. There's there's no problem. Yeah. Because there's because it's one because out of out of every ten posts, in fact it's even it's no, it's not even that much. Probably out of every fifty you might get one person. Mm. Really. Because and that person does not understand how it works. Because you look at that person's account potentially and they've got like i don't know 20 followers so they don't know they, they don't know the game and that's the reason why they've got 20 followers because you're not allowing people to share your content yeah you know? it, it's it's interesting I, mean, I speak to photographers and it's not dissimilar to you know what's happened in the music industry mm. where music has you know with the, with the advent of napster in the early 2000s where file sharing and music just became a something that was shared quite freely yeah then how do these musicians then make money out of it? And the mm. same with like with photographers that they will have a license to use. Like you know, if you if I do a building and then I hire a photographer, yeah. I'm actually a paying I'm paying him to for a license to be able to use his material. That's correct. And if anyone else wants to use those photographs, they've got to buy a license um, from him. But it it's not in the kind of culture, as you say. It's not of digital social media yeah, because which it's is a completely bad. different platform mm. i mean if you're if you're talking about externally like maybe putting a picture in a magazine um or a publication or something like that i yeah i can understand licensing rights and even saying that i'm pretty sure right now that's probably changed uh, slightly maybe it's not as it, as it used to be but what you have to remember is it's about moving with the times and not being stuck with what was done previously you have to move with the with the times you can't you can't resist these things if yeah. that's the way it's going that's the way it's going find another avenue mm. you know of um you know generating um your fees you know but the other conversation to have about that as well is understanding the long-term effects um of you allowing your post to be shared and how that might come back round at some point in time and become paid work yeah you see, because essentially you are exposing your work to a large audience. If there's somebody that requires your services, maybe they, they want some pictures taken for something else or a project or, or whatever, you know, and, they, and they've seen your work, they, they will contact you and that will mm. be, be paid work. But if you're holding on to that and not, and not allowing people to see your work, how are you going to be found? Yeah. You know, so well, it's... Well, it's, it's interesting as well. And I think about this a lot in terms of sharing content and how to protect my own content, for mm. example. <clears throat> and I deliberately make it um, difficult for you to edit me out of something. Mm. So... What, you mean like putting a watermark in? Yeah, putting a watermark, mm. branding it, or just yeah. having my face in it. You yeah. Know, if I'm if I'm personally in mm. the content, like, I don't you just share it. Go yeah. Put it, I put, have another. Put, I, put it out there yeah. as well. Like you know. I have another take on that actually, and if I see that, that kind of puts me off from actually sharing content as well. Interesting. Because I don't know. One, it it's, it kind of litters the picture. Yep. Itself. I yeah. I, I just I, it just messes up the aesthetics of the picture and. It, it just doesn't. I, yeah, I just wouldn't. Sh I would just well, wouldn't share a, a well, photo I, like that. I, I do. I do notice that um, you know some people will put like a watermark on the corner. I mean, I tend to put you know if I do like a video for business of architecture, it will have like the mm. website, a call to action yeah. on it. It's you know it's it's yeah. it's very clear, and the watermark will be in the corner, and it is. You could crop it in a way to to. Well, that's the thing. They people can, if they really wanted to, they could get rid of that. Yeah. As well. So, uh, I personally think it's 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 unnecessary. However, I do understand why people do well, no, that, well, that at the well, same that, time that, as well. Well, that's interesting as well because I hadn't I hadn't necessarily considered that actually putting a watermark on it prevents it being shared. It does. I think so. So that's so that's interesting to consider because it does. I, I really, if you're putting out good content, it's going to come. People are going to find out. It's yeah. going to come back to you anyway. Exactly. You don't need to, you know. I don't need to stamp it. As, yeah, as I, so. I, I don't think there's. Yeah, I don't think there's any need in 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 doing that. To be honest with you, I mean, 
And um, I mean, content is, it's a, con it's a constant thing. I mean, that if you're holding on to one picture, it's like, there are a million other things that are coming. Mm. Why I hold on to that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, put it out there, move on, on to the next thing. Well, so how do you curate stuff then? I mean, I, I'm getting the sense that it's, you don't have like these kind of meticulous content planners like Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, here we post at 5, at 5 a.m. and this is what we're going to do and structure it out. Yeah. How, how does it, how do you do it? Like what? Uh, it's all, <laughs> it's all, uh, what's the word I'm going to use? Organically. <laughs> 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 I think is the word I'm going to use. Yeah, improvised. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just go on a whim, um, whatever I'm feeling that day. Or sometimes, as I'm posting stuff as well, you know, a, a theme might might start to generate, and then you can latch onto that, mm. and then I might shift that into the stories, and then make a story out of it. You know, so it's yeah. I think when you do it organically, people can actually feel that. Yeah. As opposed to something that's been pre-planned. Yeah. Well, no, that's what, that's what I was saying why I like, mm. uh, like what you post because I can kind of get a sense of your, you're following something. Yeah. You're following an interest. And you're like, okay, I'm going to go yeah. and post these kind of crazy mechanisms yeah. I'll to I'll give doors. you an example. Yes, um, yesterday, um, one of the agents from Sotheby's, he posted um, a picture of a, a Mock Tudor mansion and it was in Vancouver. And I looked at it and I thought, oh, that looks like, I don't know, somewhere in, Engl somewhere in England. And as soon as, I, I, as soon as I thought that, I thought, okay, right, I'm going to make a story out of this. I'm going to um, put it on, on stories and I'm going to add a question sticker to it and say, um, can you guess where this is? I put um, Surrey and Vancouver. Just, just got it because yeah you see it's a, a simple thing like that yeah, and you're just creating engagement I'm just creating engagement yeah. because I know there's a lot of people that are going to look at that and think oh that's that's definitely sorry yeah you know <laughs> yeah. you know because yeah now I noticed that a lot about you yeah. stuff like so, you, you put questions you use yes. polls you're trying to exactly and you know and there's this thing as well that I've uh, I latched onto and I I should probably do it a bit more frequently um, which is like um, mega mentions um, where I post content about um, different mansions from around the world, and I might I might say, oh, um, look at this video, and then at the end of the video I'll say, can you guess um, the square footage of this mansion? That would be one question, and then you'll go into another one, and then you look, you sh I'll show you another video of a mansion, and then I'll say to you, can you guess the price of this mansion? Mm. And I'll give you an option, and that's the kind of thing brings engagement. People like that. I mean, it's escapism you know something different when you're scrolling through your feed and you're looking at all these different pictures and stuff like that sometimes it's nice for you know just have a little game you know and yeah it, it brings people to your site and i notice when i do that as well it, you get um a, more impressions you know you get people engaged engaging with you more so yeah i mean that's the type of stuff that you need to be you need to be doing and instagram gives you all the tools to do that you've got the question stickers um you know, you've got yeah, you've got a whole range of things that you can you know you can be doing with. Well, what I what I really like hearing you discuss is that it's I get the sense that this is it, you you love it. You, you, I do you, love you, it. Yeah, you, you've got a real genuine passion and interest in property and all its different facets. Mm. And your property tent is very much an expression of that. And like people get that as a sense. Mm. That's why it's you know that's why it's kind of exploded and it's got such a such a following from it. Um, and I know, like in the context of say, like architects using Instagram and and marketing, things can become very quickly um, overly considered, and it takes a long time to, you know, I'm going to post this one picture, and and actually, it's kind of like it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more. It's a lot more fun, and it's a lot more. Um, how can I say? Yeah, I think people think too much about posting generally. Yeah. yeah. And when you, okay, so I. I post three times a three times a day, on average, and okay, fair enough. They're reposts. Um, some of the some of the captions may may stay the same. Some of them I, in, I include my yeah. own captions. You still it got depends. to find them. You still got yeah, to find it, them. you still got to find them, and you still got you know, kind of make them match what's in your feed as well. Um, but I suppose that sort, that kind of thing comes intuitively and with time. As well, I, I probably do without even realizing. Yeah, and, and I, it was inter inter interesting hearing from you. You know, saying how do I 
like you know organize my posts and kind of stuff like that and when i said to you i don't really organize it you seemed a bit surprised by it um so that was interesting for me to hear um yeah great and, and what would you say are the sort of important principles if you like behind growing a following okay so the first thing is being consistent right like i said i post three times a day you don't have to post three times a day but if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, you need it needs to be regular because people are essentially are waiting to see what you're doing. Um, the other thing is you want to be at the forefront of your viewers' mind. You always want to be there. So I, what I'd say is I, I'd say maybe post post once a day if you can. Um, and and that could be in whatever you're doing, whether that is I mean obviously we're talking about property and architecture and stuff like that. Yes, but in whatever your interests are, you can find content, whether or not that is your own or, or somebody else's, who, you're bring, who you can bring attention to them as well and potentially collaborate with them. Mm. You know, there's a whole, there's no excuse for not being able to post, you know. Um, yeah, so that would be the first thing, consistency, being able to do it, you know, regimented, you know, once a day. Yeah, and I guess if it's something you love doing, then... Yeah, it, it wouldn't it, seem like work, really. Yeah. So that would be the, f the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, in the beginning, it's quite easy to um, respond to comments because you're not getting that many. So that's, you know, that's, that's quite easy. But as, as you start growing a following, the comments start coming thick and fast. People start asking you more detailed questions about what you're posting and stuff like that. Um, so sometimes that's when it's good to have a good relationship with the person who the originator of the content because mm -hmm. there's two things you can do. The first thing is obviously respond to that comment if you know, um, if you can answer it or even just liking it. I've, I've seen a lot of accounts that don't even like, uh, you know, comments that I made and that's so easy to do. You can just press, you just press like, that's it. It's done. You can just go through all of them and just do, 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 do and, and, and just like them. You want to go one step further and try and make a conversation. Again, this is what allows your engagement to go up. Yeah. Because you know, ask ask them a question. Why did you like that? What did you find? What did you find great at, about this post? Mm. You know, um, what is your favorite? What is your favorite thing? Of, you know, in 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 this post. You know, just create a conversation with them, and then they'll you know respond back to you, and then that's that's how it goes. And what happens is the algorithm once it sees that there's people commenting on your post, then they start showing yeah. it to more people. So that's how, it, that's how it grows. So commenting on other posts is a huge factor. Well, this, this kind of goes into the, you know, the idea of like being able to share stuff because it's really the main thing about social media is that it is a conversation. It is a conversation, yeah. So like, you know, you, wanna, you just want to better say, did you see this? It's literally like, did you see this? Mm. Have a look, what do you think? Yeah. And you can kind of think about it like that. Exactly. Anything else? Any um, yeah. So yeah. So that's um, yeah. Responding to your own comments. Yeah. And like I said, if it was something you couldn't answer and you've built a relationship with the person who's the originator of that post, you can then reach out to them, or they can even jump in. Right. You see, and yeah. when they jump in on your post, that is, you know, they're doing they're doing the work for you. Yeah. Essentially, it's engagement on your post. You know, they're having a conversation with somebody else who's commented on your, and you're just seeing that conversation, and you have nothing to do with it. Brilliant. You know, that's, that's amazing. You can, you know, you can do that. So that's, so that's one aspect, um, commenting on your own posts. The other thing, which is, again, which people forget to do is engaging in the wider community. So engaging in other accounts and the, the stuff that they're doing. Okay, you want people to comment on your posts. Yeah, that's all well and good. But what about, you want people to comment on your posts, but you don't want to comment on other people's. Right. You know, it's, there's something missing there. Yeah. You have, if you want it to come back to you, you have to reach reach out. Do you know? Scratch someone else's back, and then they'll scratch yours, kind of thing. You know. So, and again, that's building rapport. Yeah. Um, you know, building. Um, you know, engaging with another person, and potentially, you know, that could lead to a, a collaboration. Mm. You know, or they may, they may go into your account and then end up following you, and then you know. It, it's. It's interesting because when we start looking at it like a conversation, mm. like, you know, when you're in a conversation with somebody, you don't think, what am I going to post? What am I, I don't, you, know, you don't plan out what, all the things no. you're going to say. You just go with it. You, you just go with it. You, you because hit, the you, even um, 
sometimes I even post stuff that I think in the beginning I used to post stuff that I, I would I would potentially think would do well. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, this would definitely do well. And then you get slapped in the face because for whatever reason, it you know, it doesn't do well. So you have to reverse that as well and think to yourself, do you know what? It's not always about what's really nice. It's about the conversation. Yeah. Sometimes you post something that's, you know, it's like, what, what can people talk about? You know, okay, oh, that, I didn't like that because of such and such. You know, again, you're generating a conversation. Mm. So that's, a, a, you know, another interesting way to look at it. It's not all about just posting what you think is going to do well. Yeah, well, I mean, just, no, normally when you when you think like that, it doesn't, like you say, it exactly. does, it's not what you think. It's not what you think, it yeah. It does, does well. Are there any other platforms that you that you play with, that you're involved in? That you're all of them. In? All of them. <laughs> what, what, are yeah, your, so, what are your sort of up and coming okay, tips so or ones that you, you're enjoying playing with at the moment? Okay. Um, okay, so the ones that I'm enjoying using at the moment because the organic reach is just crazy. Um, the first one I'll, I'll say is um, LinkedIn. Right, yeah. Um, LinkedIn, again, this is, this is what I like about the different platforms because it allows you to reach people in different mindsets because the way somebody's mind is working when they're looking at Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, even Snapchat, is completely different. Mm. I mean, you could have the same um, content on each of those platforms, but approach it from a completely different angle. Mm. You see? Um, I could post something on um, on Instagram and, you know, ask somebody a question about, oh, look at the interior design, um, you know, in this property, what do you think about it? And then again, I can go onto LinkedIn and then I could completely switch that up and then start talking about, wow, look how this interior designer has staged this property, you know, you know, with the um, potential for it being attractive to someone who's looking to buy it. Mm. Now, for a property developer, um, looking at that, they'll you know they'll be saying, "Oh, okay, we've got this new development that's coming up. We like the way this interior designer is um, flexing here. You know, why don't we <laughs> give <laughs> why don't we give them a a look?" And because LinkedIn is more about um, it's more business minded, you you have a lot of um, you know CEOs, um, you know executive directors, people with actual influence in the actual companies mm. that have the power to make decisions about those, that type of thing, mm. looking at it. So you can approach the content from a completely different different angle. And then you have things like TikTok, for instance, which is the complete other spectrum, which is more like escapism. Yeah. You know, it's like your, your naughty little brother, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you can't bring anywhere. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and... <laughs> And we all need, you know, as much as you hate him, you, you still, you know, you some, you like to have him because uh, he, he... I'm a big TikTok <laughs> lover, man. I, I am as well. Absolutely. It is the most addictive it is. platform. It is. Like you can, f all of a sudden, you've, an hour's gone and you're like... Trust oh my, me. Oh my God, I can't ever spend an hour. What I know. I, what have just, I been looking at? Just scrolling <laughs> up and down, looking at stuff. But, and um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting platform. And I must admit, I have, I have found people on TikTok... Um, and then gone onto their Instagram account, you know, to see the more serious side. Of, well, I say serious, but yeah, more serious than TikTok anyway, side of that person. And then, you know, you get to see another, you know, another side to that yes. person. Yes. And I've seen it happen the other way as well. Um, so there's um, there's a um, a guy who I met through, um, I believe, Sotheby's. And he's he deals in sort of currency exchange, you know, when, you know, you have people who are purchasing um, properties from overseas and mm. potentially when you're purchasing a property that's, you know, worth, I don't know, 10 million pounds, you know, currency exchange comes into play here because, yeah. you know, you can't just necessarily say, okay. Do it on Tuesday. It's yeah. Lose yourself yeah, exactly. So, you know, he kind of like facilitates, you know, um, you know, the exchange of currency in that way. And I've seen him sort of jump from, LinkedIn and Instagram and, you know, jump into TikTok. And, you know, we had a little conversation about it as well. And I said, look, you know, TikTok is an up and coming and an emerging platform. Um, at the moment, people look at it and think, oh, yeah, this is, no, you know, my six-year-old, not six-year-old, my 11-year-old is on it. You know, it's, it's not serious at all. But what you have to remember is that the same thing was said about Facebook, you know, 
Facebook was the platform where, and, I, and I'm even guilty of that myself when I look back. I, I said to my, oh, I'm never going to go on that. What, what am I doing that for? You know, that's, that's, you know, that's for kids or, you know, that's, that's not cool. You know, and then it blew up and you were, essentially, you felt left behind. If you went on, on Facebook, it's like you've been left behind. The same thing is happening with, with TikTok. And in fact, sorry, going back to Facebook, Facebook has gone through a massive transition whereby even now, as a marketer on Facebook, if you're trying to market to your 18 to 34-year-olds, essentially, there's a better platform to do that, which is Instagram. Yeah. Facebook, apparently... 50 going if you're marketing to 50 year olds and over facebook is the one interesting facebook is the one <clears throat> real that's really fascinating it's mad your your, your nan is on facebook <laughs> literally <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> just, <laughs> so it's, so it's gone the other way yeah. from it you know from you know the youngsters being on it and it's not too cool now your nan's on it yeah you know so now it's not cool so now what what happens is people come off of that because it's not cool anymore, because your nan's on it. Yeah. So now you go into the next platform, which was Instagram. Instagram has now been built up. I mean, Instagram's got over a billion users on it. It's Instagram is completely saturated with with users. Um, and in fact, I don't know if you've noticed. I know I I certainly have. The reach on Instagram has slowly started to de- decline. Yeah. Because essentially, what Instagram are doing now is lowering your reach so that. They don't have to keep. They, they want basically want to narrow your feed down so that they can start showing ads. So they want they want to they want to push their their um, their ads. So that's the whole purpose of it. They build up the platform to a certain a certain level. Um, once your feed becomes saturated, they have to limit it mm. because there's too much content on there. They need to limit it so that your reach will go down and they'll start showing ads so that they can start selling sell, selling ads. Um, and the reason why LinkedIn and TikTok are so um, are so great at the moment and have a huge reach is because they're new platforms. Now, TikTok has 500 million followers, and that's amazing, isn't it? That is like well, it's in, it's. I was saying to you earlier, like my sort of TikTok adventures has meant that I've grown a, uh, an audience bigger than any of. Anything I have on Instagram, like yeah. as a single audience, I've yeah. got quite a lot of followers on lots of different platforms yeah. collectively. But um, you know, within the space of a couple of months on TikTok, it's just blown it up. It just blew up, and just you know, I got a, one video that got you know three quarters of a million views. And ag- and the funny, it's the most stupid video I've ever made, but <laughs> yeah. bloody people dressed up as grannies yeah. on trolleys. But <laughs> and and the reason for that is surprising or not I mean I, I, I'm still trying to get my head around it but apparently there's not a, a lot of people creating content on TikTok right which is which is why um, the reach is so is so large because there's not a lot of content on there so they so they show it to more people mm. you see and they're and, at, and, it, and it's, it's important to consider because like you were saying about how you know you might go onto TikTok and you're like oh it's just full of like teenagers mucking around mm. and you know, making silly videos with their parents and and whatever. There's no place for for me as a as a business person to be yep. here or doing this. But like you say, Instagram and Facebook were once those. We they had level that idea. up exactly, and yep. that, and if you're going in now and you're able to build, yeah. you know, um, audiences of of you know going above that that sort of five k, ten k mark, right? You know, let it mature in a couple of years. Boom, exactly. that's your target audience yep. right there. So or, sixteen year old Jimmy. <laughs> you know, at the age of 21, you know, could potentially be a, you know, paying customer. Yeah, exactly. You know? so <laughs> exactly. That's the other thing. The audience, the audience grows as exactly. well as, as well as attract um, more mature audiences. Yeah. Any other platforms that you're, you're loving at the moment? Um, yeah. So the main ones, obviously, LinkedIn, TikTok. Um, well, I'm interested in actually getting into podcasting as well. So that's another conversation. Um, I highly recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> yeah. Highly, highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, and again, it's another way of meeting people yeah. in the industry and allowing them to tell their story. Mm. And, you know, I'm, I'm somebody who loves learning. I'm interested in what people have to say. And as well as I'm ext- extrapolating value from them, I always want to bring value back as well. And, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you you've seen that even you know when I came to your first event um, business of architecture 
at UNI offices in Victoria. Um, that was a very um, interesting thing for me to do because, again, I was probably the only person, well, I don't know. I felt like I was the only person that wasn't an architect in there. <laughs> and I literally felt like a fish out of water. Um, but I felt that that was something that I had to do. And, you know, I needed to be able to mix with, you know, people in, in, in those circles in order to understand how the architecture business works from a lay person, <laughs> mm. you know. And again, like I said, even though I'm not trained as an architect or an interior designer or an estate agent or whatever, there, there is something that I can bring because I can see it from, a, I can see it from the consumer's, consumer's lens, you know. Well, and well, this is interesting. How do, you, how do you view the architecture world from, from, from the consumer lens? What can you see that, that, okay. we, that architects um, struggle to see? I can see? see that it's a very close-knit community. Um, very polite. <laughs> and they're, they're very precious about their work. And yeah, and you know, I believe, and I agree with, I agree with that because again, we had an earlier conversation about, you know, what it takes to become an architect and mm. the amount of studying and um, effort you need to put into it. And I can understand, I, I have empathy and I can understand exactly why um, architects, you know, feel that way or, or, or behave in, in, in that way. Um, because yeah, they've been, you know, they've they've been through it, and you know, and essentially, you guys are artists. You know, you are you are essentially, um, you know, working off of a brief, working off of something that's not even there, and creating it and making it into something tangible that you can actually touch and look at. Um, you know, something that's going to be around for years, or you know, or be around forever. Mm. <laughs> Realistically, you know. Um, you know, architects, obviously, you guys have a civic responsibility. Um, and looking at that in the wider picture, you know, anything that you create is going to essentially affect the area in which it in which it's in. So there's a lot of thought that needs to go into what you guys do. And, um, yeah, and, you know, it's interesting. You have to deal with a lot of different um, sections as well. I know you guys deal with planning officers, and I, I bet you that is, a, <laughs> that is like pulling teeth, right? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, you want to you want to get architects riled up. Start yeah. talking about planning. Yeah. And, then and um, yeah. And another interesting thing as well, coming back to what I was talking about, um, being able to go into another or see it from another person's perspective. Yeah. And you made an, another point in one of your I don't know podcasts or content, and he was talking about architects. Um, actually. I don't know, an, an architect being in a planning department or going, you know, because a planning officer is not necessarily going to know what constraints or, um, you know, what problems an architect is facing mm. and they cannot serve them correctly in that way. But if an architect who, who has been practicing for a period of time then goes on to become a planning officer in, 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 in whatever um, aspect, they have a different perspective. They have... You, do you, do you see what I mean? They yeah. can explain it to another planning officer and say, oh, hold on a minute, you know, these guys are, you know, are working on this, you know, different constraints. I understand where he's coming from here and, you know, and it, it potentially could make that whole process much smoother. Yeah. And that works for everything, not just a planning officer in, um, an architect in a, in a planning department. It works for everything. Yeah, totally. Which is why I'm saying me as a layperson being able to see certain things from a different angle as well. And which is where the marketing side of things comes into it. Love it, love it. So yeah. what's, what's next for, for Property Tent? Um, yeah, so the next thing for Property Tent essentially is starting off the podcast. And again, like the way I've been curating content for Property Tent, it's, it's gonna go along the same kind of lines. Um, essentially, I'm not gonna like narrow down on a niche within property. I'm going to talk to everybody, Every, everybody that has something to do with property. I want to approach it from that angle so you can see, you know, how they got to where they were, um, you know, what their constraints are, um, the things that they do in, you know, in their, in their daily work, you know, stuff like things that, the, um, you know, the audience will find interesting or, and, and can obtain value from. Um, it's at the early stages. I don't know. I haven't got a name. Haven't got any artwork. Haven't you know? Haven't got anything. So I've got all the gear and no idea. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> I literally got all the stuff. But <laughs> love it. Yeah. Love it. Um, yeah. And then obviously the other side of it. Again, I'm going to concentrate on my personal branding 
and that will tie in with the podcast as well because a lot of that is going to be sort of me um and in my i don't think it's going to be called property 10 or have any it's going to be an extension of that i think so great yeah. nigel i think there's a perfect place to to wrap up there thank you so much for your passion and thank enthusiasm you very much for and, your, and, me. and your expertise and uh i look forward to consuming more of your content thank you excellent thank you very much and that's a wrap thank you so much for listening and don't forget to book your 15 minute chat with me by using the link in the information i look forward to speaking with you the views expressed on this show by my guest do not represent those of the host and i make no representation promise guarantee pledge warranty contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable